this and the next video, we will talk about private solutions to the problem of a negative, in this case, consumption externality. So what we will do is uh, we will illustrate uh, the, the problem and also the solution using the tools we already know for the smoking example. So we will use Edgeworth boxes and we have two consumers, one who is a smoker and another person who hates smoking and who basically has a utility loss from the fact that the other person smokes. Now each agent has a money endowment of 100 euro and we will see how this it, that, that this endowment will matter a good bit because it depends obviously then uh, or it, what will depend on it is how much person um, A will smoke and uh, the private solution will then be that either A pays B for the right to smoke or B pays A for the right to clean air. That, that's the idea of, of what, it, what it will ultimately come down to. So to analyze this, we start again with the Edgeworth box. And so we have to look here at each consumer, first of all, separately, and then we're going to put them together in an Edgeworth. So for person A, the smoker, matters are very clear. So you have utility levels that are represented by those indifference curves. And obviously, the more the person smokes, the less money the person can spend on other things. Um, so there is a trade-off between smoking and money, which really means trade-off between smoking and spending money on other things. But obviously, the further we go away here from the origin, the better it is for the person, because the person has, uh, at, at, for example, at that point here, can smoke more cigarettes and has more money to spend on other things compared to a point here at a lower end. So that's standard, standard things you've seen before. Now for B, we have to use a little trick, right? Because obviously for B, it's also better to have more money than less. But what is better for B is to have less smoke compared to more smoke. So the more person A smokes, the, the worse this is for person B. Right? So for person B, we also have indifference curves that go away from the origin and higher indifference curves mean a higher level of utility. But the trade-off here is basically between having lots of money to spend on other things and having cleaner air that may potentially be costly. Okay, so, so, so the trick we used here is simply to have a negative definition of whatever is on the vertical axis so that the more that the other person smokes, the further we are at the bottom here, towards here, and, and the worse this is for, for that, that person. Okay, so, so the person gets a higher utility, the more money the person has, and the less smoke the person has to inhale. What that gives us is it can, we can actually put all those things together in an Edgeworth box. Right? And so we have, again, uh, person, a is, person A's origin is, is down here, person B's origin is up here, and then we have the utility level of person A increases as we go from that person's origin uh, north east, and um, the uh, and person person B's utility increases as we go from that person's uh, origin southwest in that Edgeworth box. So what we're going to introduce now. And that, that is crucial for understanding what the Coase theorem tells us and what, how it operates, is we introduce property rights. And so we assume that there is no trade in those property rights. So 
it's either that one person owns the right to clean air and that that it only makes sense if B owns that um, or A owns the right to smoke. Okay? So if, if B owns the right to clean air, well, it, it, the best outcome for that person is probably not to smoke, that there is no smoke. Okay? And then the person can basically forbid A to smoke completely. If A owns the right to smoke, and we will denote this with a red star. A here is not a communist, but the person has a red star. Um, if A owns the right to smoke, they will smoke all their cigarettes. Right? So, so they, they will smoke all their cigarettes um, because they can. They have the right, they have every right to do so. The question is just, if we have one of those situations of those property rights, is the solution that comes out actually efficient? And the answer is no, but we might get to an efficient solution. So let's start by graphing those different property rights. So we said that the green star is person B owning the property right. And the green star is the property rights to clean air. So the green star is person B's endowment point. Right? So person B, that, that for, from the perspective of person B, what it means is we are here at the level of 100 euro endowment. So it splits exactly uh, the, the horizontal axis 50-50, the total endowment is 200 of money, um, A owns 100, B owns 100. So person B can forbid A to smoke. So we are here at that level where person A doesn't smoke at all, and person B can spend their 100 euro on whatever they please. So that's the one scenario. That's when person B owns the right to clean air. That's the green star here. Yeah, so you can see it down here. Now, the, the red star is different. Um, that indicates the endowment point if person A owns the property rights to smoke. So it has simply the right to smoke. In that case, person A smokes the maximum amount they can and also spends 100 euro, which is that line. Okay. So we will see these are the two endowment points under those different property rights. The property rights matter a lot for what the endowment points are and what the potential solutions might be. And now we use the tools that we learned in lecture two, which is look at those indifference curves that run through those endowment points. And you can immediately see that neither of those endowment points is Pareto efficient. Why is that? Well, because in either case, we have gains from trade. So we, we have, it's not from trade in the property rights, but we, we basically can get some efficiency gains. And how are those efficiency gains? So first of all, where are they? Well, they are in, in these two blue lenses that are indicated by those indifference that run through the endowment. So from the perspective of the green star, and this is person B owning the right to clean air, we can move we can move somewhere into this lens here. From the perspective of the red star, which is when person A owns the right to smoke as much as they want, and person B cannot do anything against that, we can still move into this lens here. Now, what does this mean? Let's start with, with the, the example 
uh, did it start with the Green Star and moving uh, basically northwest from there? What does that mean? Well, in that case, what it would mean is that person A would pay person B for the right to smoke. So person B in that case would have a bigger endowment because they get, let's say, if we move to that point, they get this much from person A, right? But person A in compensation no longer smokes zero, but now smokes at that level. The other example is when person A owns all the property rights for uh, smoking, so has the right to smoke however much they want, we can still get gains by moving into this blue lens. And let's say we arrive at an optimal point here, where if you remember well, those indifference curves would then be tangential to one another if we arrive at that point. Now at that point, again, person B would pay person A something. Why would person B pay person A something? Well, they would pay them for smoking less, okay? to pollute the air less, because person B values clean air. And clean air is a normal good. They, they would pay more to have clean air. And so, so here we have basically person B paying person A, and person A in compensation smokes less, and person B has to basically endure or, or have you know less experience, less smoke by that amount that I've indicated up. So once again, the initial endowment points that are defined by those property rights are not efficient. There can be gains from trade. But if you compare those two points, and I promise, I know this is messy, but um, I promise this is, this is the last thing I, I draw here. If you compare this point here to that point here, the optimal point very much depends on what the initial endowments are. So who owns the property right? This person will always be better. If I own the property rights to smoke and I'm a smoker, well, that's great for me because I can charge other people to, to pay me. And if, I, if they want me to smoke less, they have to pay. If I'm the person owning the right to clean air and that's enforceable, then I can actually charge others a fee if they want to pollute the air through their smoke. And then we are in, in this point. And otherwise, if, if we look at the, the, the payment for smoking less, we end up at that point. Okay, and then so, so in, you can see this point down here is obviously way more advantageous for person B, whereas this point is way more advantageous total for person A. So the who owns the property rights has a huge advantage in this, but we come to a Pareto efficient solution. That's the point here. So through charging these fees, uh, paying for clean air or paying for smoking, um, we can actually get to a Pareto efficient solution. These may not be the solutions that are desirable from a society's point of view. This is a totally different question, but they are Pareto efficient. Yeah, so so that, that slide just summarizes that. Um, so we have a missing market here, which is the market for the rights to smoke. Um, but there, there can still be negotiations between those that, that, that correct for this externality and come to a Pareto efficient solution. How this is done, we will talk about it in the next video.